Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, so Ray is away for a few weeks. Um, he's in Denver with uh, Remax International uh, doing a conference for them. So he's keeping busy. And uh, I, if you don't know me, my name is Rebecca, and I am Ray's assistant. I help him with recruiting realtors as well as training realtors in the tech uh, world that we have today for realtors. So I make sure that, that you guys know what it is that you need um, to get ahead. I also own a business called Realty Butler, and what that is is we provide administrative and social media services for realtors, and I'll, I'll let you know a little bit more about that, but what I'm going to talk about today is Facebook, and it's the big, you know, everybody's saying, do you have a Facebook page? Do you, are you doing posts? And as a realtor, you're expected to know everything about everything, of course. Um, so I'm going to try to give you a few tips on how to make sure that you become visible on Facebook, and I'm going to... I'm going at it from the assumption that I know there's people in here who've played with Facebook who know a little bit about it, and then there's people who, who just don't even know how to start a Facebook page. So I'm going to go at it from the very, the very roots of it. Um, if I make any assumption, just raise your hand and say, what was that? I'm sorry. Because um, I know that once you get used to technology, sometimes we make assumptions that other people know what it is, and it's not, if the people don't understand that. So, Please feel free to let me know, um, interrupt with questions as much as you like. So I'm here to make sure that you guys know how to do this. So um, I'm going to share with you a couple of stats on Facebook to start. And the reason for that is because a lot of people still don't think that Facebook is for business. Uh, they think it's a place where people post pictures of their kids and their dogs, and they, you know, make friends and they get in touch with old college roommates and it, but there's actually a lot of business opportunities on Facebook so um, in March 2010 Facebook surpassed Google as the most visited site on the internet in a week so we go on Google constantly to, to do query, queries and searches um, Facebook actually gets more hits in a week than Google does uh, one out of eight minutes online is spent on Facebook. Uh, the average user age in Canada is between 25 and 34. So it tells you that it's not high school students, it's people who are ready to buy homes. So that's something that you guys really need to keep an eye out for. There are 18 million Facebook users in Canada. Um, I think it's like 32 or 320 million across the world right now. Or no, they've surpassed the billion user now. So it's, it's way beyond. And approximately 1 in 13 people are on Facebook an hour and a half. Wow, that's, this does not make sense. Just ignore <laughs> that line. Um, I think it's why approximately 1 in 13 people are on Facebook for half an hour on any given day. So, sorry about that. So, your average Facebook user joins 10 fan pages on average. 33% uh, are likely to do product research on Facebook. 51% are likely to buy a product from a business page that they follow. 60% will recommend a fan page to their friends. And 68% are likely to buy a product recommended to them on Facebook. So it's, one of the, it's, it's becoming more and more where people go to find out more about the business that they're interested in, but also to ask for feedback from other people. So it's, it's one of those things that um, you can open a Facebook page about your business and never post but then nobody's ever going to see you. And then if they look you up, they're going to say, oh, there's, this person is on Facebook, but they are obviously not interacting. I don't even know if they're in business anymore. That's the assumption that is going to be made. It's almost equivalent to what your web page used to be. If you don't have a web page, people won't find you. Now it's if you don't have a Facebook page, people will assume that you're not really serious about your business. So it's something that you really want to think of. 20 minutes on Facebook, you can see here, there's a ton of things that happen on average in 20 minutes on Facebook. There's almost 2 million status updates. There's 10 million comments made. Um, almost 3 million messages sent. And that's just in 20 minutes. So a lot goes on time to get. So as far as engagement goes, traffic, and this is really important for you guys, you really need to keep an eye on when you post on Facebook. because. If you, you know, we tend to post during work hours, right? Um, that's not necessarily when people are actually looking on Facebook. You have to think about the, your client. When is your client going to be looking on Facebook? Usually it's going to be before work, after work, during lunch. Um, traffic is highest midweek between 1 and 3 p.m. It's that 
Wednesday afternoon lull when nobody really wants to get any work done. <laughs> um, engagement is 18% higher on Thursdays and Fridays. So people are starting to get distracted for the weekend. Um, and that's when you want to make sure that people are seeing your posts. The average time spent on Facebook is 20 minutes per visit. And brand engagement in 2011 increased by 176%. So more and more we're seeing businesses rely on a Facebook strategy to get business out of it. Um, so that's something that I feel that realtors, a lot of, everybody's kind of caught on on the, I got to start a page, but they're not catching on on how do I become visible on Facebook and when do I want to be visible on Facebook. So we want to think about not so much as a business or as a, as a realtor, it's easy to kind of get caught up in, I need to get this done, I'm going to do it now, um, instead of when would it be most efficient to do it. And so this is where you want to make sure that uh, you, the majority of her posts happen towards the end of the week. Also weekends, that's one thing that you want to think about too. A lot of people are on Facebook on the weekends. Um, and I'm going to show you guys a little bit about pre-scheduling posts and that kind of stuff. So these are some Facebook stats from last year. 42% of marketers say Facebook is critical to their business. 75% increase over the last three years for the number of businesses who say Facebook is critical. So people, businesses more and more are catching on to this trend. It's one of those things that um, is becoming more and more standard that a company will have a social media strategy. So you want to make sure that you are starting to think about, and you were saying, you know, she had a social media specialist come in saying, uh, you need to spend 45 minutes a day on Facebook. That is not what I am saying here. What I'm trying to give you is the tools so that you don't have to spend 45 minutes a day, but you are having some kind of efficiency on there. So that's something that's really important for you guys. Auto posting on Facebook decreases likes and comments by 70%. So there's a lot of services out there that are going to tell you, I'm going to take care of your social media. Don't you worry about it. And what they do is they link you to a source that feeds quotes to it, stats, and it just kind of auto posts every 20 minutes on your Facebook page, people stop paying attention to you a lot faster that way. I'm not saying that quotes are bad. Some people really, you know, if you read a quote and it, it hits you in a personal way, it's good to put that on Facebook. But if you're putting 12 quotes on Facebook in one day, people aren't gonna pay attention anymore. So um, auto posting is not really convenient. Uh, it seems convenient, but you're gonna lose followers that way. 36% of advertisers on Facebook have driven traffic off of their Facebook ads and onto their external landing page. And that is the goal for you, is you want people to go to your Facebook page, see it, learn a bit about you, but then go from your Facebook page to your web page, mm -hmm. where they will really understand what it is that you do in real estate. So that's something I'll we'll also touch on a bit later, how would you do that? The average business page posts once every 16 days. So this is where your huge advantage comes in. So many business pages are made, and then they post for a little while, and then it's like once every few weeks, and then it's once every six months. People are interested in how often you do it and how often you interact. Your, the time value of your post, it starts decaying right away. And if you're posting once every 16 days, then people aren't going to take you seriously if they're the type of people who find business on Facebook. Um, I'm not saying you have to post every 30 minutes. But an average of three times a week is actually something that, that is recommended for businesses. So. so I'm going to go through a few basic terms in case you're completely unfamiliar with Facebook. And these are terms that you hear quite often. So there's two types of pages on Facebook. You build your personal profile. This is not for business. This is where you, you get on Facebook and they say, I want to create an account. And you fill in all your information. And then you start finding friends, and you send a friend request, and then they friend you back. And, and that's the whole, and this is where you post the pictures of your kids and your dogs, and you know, you talk about your sprained ankle and all that stuff. So, um, but it's not for business. And that's the mistake that I've seen a lot of people making lately, is they'll say, oh yeah, I'm on Facebook, you know, I'm on Facebook. But if you don't have a business page, you have a personal page which means that someone has to actually ask you to be their friend in order to connect with you. And people who don't know you aren't gonna do that. They just don't, they, they don't care enough to do that. 
Um, so then there is what is called a page, and that is for business. So I'm going to show you how you open a page on Facebook. Um, and the, diff the big difference with that is instead of having to friend someone, you just like their page. There's a little box that says, I like this. You say, and that's it. Um, you don't have to become friends with them. The, the page is visible to anyone in the world. There's no restrictions on that. Whereas with a personal profile, you can actually set your restrictions so that only your friends can find you, or only friends of your friends can find you, or nobody can find you if you're a very private person. The advantage to this is that if you're the type of person who has been on Facebook and has created a lot of friends on Facebook, and you go, well, how do I start using it for business now? You start a business page. And then you can keep your business on one side and your personal friendships on the other. It never crosses over. They're not going to, nobody on your business page can go over and look into your personal page. Uh, it only happens to be that the way you access your business page is through your personal page. So, and I'll explain that a bit. Like means I acknowledge that I have seen your post. I, I've, there it is. It's kind of like a nod. Um, so every time you put out a post, there's an option at the bottom to like or share that post or comment on that post. So that's what like means. Comment means I like it. So if somebody actually takes the time to write, they have uh, nodded and they have also said, you know what, I like what you just said. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reaffirm or maybe I'm going to ask a question about it. Share means that I trust this person. So what it does is if, if they click on the share button, it's going to go on their Facebook page for all of their friends to see. So they've said, you know, say you post a really inter interesting article and they click share. They are going to say, I trust that Bob is a, is a real realtor and that he does good business. And I like the article that he just posted and I want all my friends to see it. So that's how they share it. The timeline is what has happened. So whenever you go on someone's page, you can see a bunch of things that they have posted. Um, it's basically the history, their history on Facebook. And it's funny because with Facebook now, you can go all the way to birth. You can actually add events. So this is when I was born. This is when I took my first tooth. You can do the whole thing. So, um, and then a post is what is up. This is what I'm up to, or this is something interesting I ran across. That is what a post is on Facebook. And I did put that on your handout for you guys. So this is a personal profile. This is what people see when they look at my personal profile. So you can see my, me and my dear husband. And then they can see uh, my friends who have commented on my page recently. Uh, these are the people I've been looking at recently. I've been playing Revel. Like, it's a game I play sometimes. It's a word game. So people can kind of see my friends. This is a personal profile. Um, as you can see, there's no like at the top there. So they can't like my personal profile. I have it set so that you can see my name on, web, on um, Facebook, you can search my name, but you can't see all of this unless you're my friend. So you can change that all in your settings. So as a realtor, I do suggest that you work with your privacy settings so that um, if you're, especially someone who's really active on Facebook, um, make sure you set your personal page so that only your friends can see what you're posting. Because if they don't, then somebody might find because they can find both your personal page and your business page they click on your personal page and they might see something that really irks them and the, or they might see you as less professional so this is a business page so this is what people see when they look at the business page so as you can see there's not a huge difference um, sorry there's a banner at the top and you can choose whatever picture you want I just have enough cities on the both of these and there's a little box here um, where you put your picture or you put your business logo, whatever you prefer. This is a page that we started for Realty Butler, which just launched last week. So we have 35 likes. You know? <laughs> um, but if anybody goes to my page, this is, unfortunately, it's hard for me because I was logged in as this page. There's usually a little box here that says like, and they can click on it and like it. Um, and then they'll see my recent posts. They'll see people I recently interacted with. Um, and also pages I have recently liked, other business pages. So as a business, you can like other businesses and kind of create a cycle of that. So this is how you start a page. This is my personal, when I log into Facebook, this is what I see. Um, this is my home page. And, and what it is, is it's going to, all the posts that pop up on my personal profile are people that I am friends with or pages that I have liked. 
So this is actually a business page, Lisa Marie, and she's a trainer that I, she has a business page and I have liked her page. So this is her most recent post. And that's kind of how it works. If you put a post up that somebody has, or that somebody's liked on your page, they're gonna see it on their home page. Um, so what you need to do is you need to go all the way over to the left and there's a, a spot here that says pages. And if you click on pages, um, it is going to, a little box is gonna pop up that says create a page. And then you're just gonna create a page and it walks you through a step-by-step, -step. what kind of business are you? Enter your information. Um, so you just follow the prompts to create your page. And what that does is, I'm just gonna go back here one second. Uh, once you log into your home page forevermore, there's, you, under your pages here, <coughs> you will be able to see, I have access to all the Remax little pages or whatever. Um, you will be able to see your page here, and you can click on that, and when you do that, you are now representing your business, not yourself. So, when, if you click, if you write a comment, you're writing a comment as your business. If you go to someone else's page and write a comment on their page, you're writing a comment as your business. So, always make sure you separate those two, because if you think you're logged in as yourself, and you're trying to make a personal comment, you want to make sure that you're there. And the way you can tell is at the very top, it tells you logged in as, um, and you'll know that you're logged in as your business because it's your business name on there. So. Okay, so any questions so far? We feeling okay? All right. So, yes. So, so um, I know you sent me something on this Realty Butler. You can do all this for us too if we don't. I can do all of this for you. I'll, I'll do all the setup for you. I'll do all the posts. And I'll get into that in a sec. Uh, so a Facebook page is a, is a public site that anyone can access. So you have to be prepared to be visible, just like you are on your website. Anybody can find your website on Google. Anybody can find your Facebook page on Facebook, and that's your business page. You are not friended by people, you're liked by people. So always make sure you keep that difference. Um, and if you're, everyone, every now and then I'll go onto a realtor, realtor will say, oh yeah, I have a page, and you look, and you go, nope, you actually don't have a business page. You have a personal page, and the only way to find out about you is if I become your friend. And I might not necessarily want to be your friend. I just want to like your page. So that's something that you really want to make sure you do. Fill out your profile entirely and populate with your page with some posts and pictures before you let people know about it. So one of the mistakes I see a lot of realtors do is they start a business page, and then they email all their clients and they go, I started a business page, click here, like my page. And then they go to the page and there's nothing on there. There's not, they don't even have a phone number on there on how to reach you. So make sure that you populate it. And it is gonna walk you through when you create a page, it'll say, put a picture here, put your information here. So you wanna make sure that you fill in, there's like an about section, there's a section where you can put your website. You wanna make sure that you put that all in. You can also create a few posts, um, you can talk about, uh, I'm brand new to this, welcome to my page, and, and that kind of stuff. So you want to kind of make it so that people know that you've put in a little bit of effort before you start it. I'm not saying you have to have 30 posts so that people can look through it, but just a couple of things to make you a bit interesting. Uh, when you reach 25 likes, you can shorten your URL. And what that means is when you create a Facebook business page, um, your URL becomes www.facebook.com slash Remax little O Bob Edward slash F3467, like it's a super long URL. Once you reach 25 likes, you can go into the settings and you can actually shorten that and change it to just be facebook.com slash Bob Edwards. And that's it. And so that way, whenever you put that, if you want to put on your business card, if you want to put it on any written material, it's a lot easier for people to just identify uh, how to find you on Facebook. Um, and so what I recommend, and, and this is kind of a cheater way to do it, but you start a Facebook page, and then you let your friends know, look, I'm trying to get up to 25 likes, could you just like my page? Just let your friends know that, that you trust. You get up to 25, you shorten the URL, you put in a few comments, and that's when you kind of go, I have a Facebook page, everyone, and you can let all your clients know. So that's a suggestion. Before you publish a page, Give your page a short and understandable name. So if there's a spot where it lets you give it a name, 
If you make it a super long name, that is the name that they will be able to find you on when they search you on Facebook. So you want to make it understandable. Uh, you don't want to include your, your tagline in your name as well. Um, I've seen that a few times where they'll say, Remax Little Oak, first name, last name, I'm the best realtor you'll ever see out there. That's their name. <laughs> and, and it just becomes way too long. So try to come up with something concise. Um, create clear goals. And this is something that is really important for a realtor to do. And I'm just going to go, hold on, zoom out. My window got all twisted. Um, this is a, a blogger that I follow. He does social media for people. And um, his mom actually has a Facebook page, and she has way more interaction. She gets a lot of hits, a lot of business through her Facebook page than he ever did. And he's like, why in the world? What is it that she does? And her biggest thing, and he interviewed her, and her biggest thing is that she has a strat she has a mission and she has a strategy. She knows who her fans are who she is trying to reach. And one of the mistakes we, you make as realtors sometimes is, um, I, I, obviously you want to reach everyone. You want to get as many clients as you can. But you tend to attract a certain kind of market. So maybe you're the person who is selling uh, a home to a person who is moving up from a condo or a townhouse. Maybe you're the person who is getting older people into retirement in more smaller places. Um, upsizing, downsizing, you're, you want to reach a target market. And that's something that you want to define before you start making posts on your Facebook page. So right here, she knows right away, these are my fans. I know who my fans are. So the articles that I post, I want to make sure that they're interesting to my fans. She also knows what the mission is of the company that she is posting on behalf of. We want to encourage people, we want to market the book we have, and we want to promote our website. So you want to have goals written out. So maybe you want to create relationships with dual income, no kids, couples. Um, so that's what you're going to try to target specifically. And um, I really, I thought it was very interesting that she had both a mission and she knew who her fans were, because right away, all of her posts are going to be relevant to those people. So and it's one of those things that you're gonna watch out for. If you tend to attract younger couples, don't put up a post about a retirement home, because nobody's really gonna care. So. You want to try to target your market with that. Okay. So define your target market. Encourage people to like your page. So one of the ways you can encourage that is you change your email signature so that at the bottom it says, like my Facebook page. And every time you send out an email to someone, that appears at the bottom. There's a link to your Facebook page. You can also put it on your business cards, you can put it on your newsletter, you can put it on your website and have a little Facebook icon. You want to try to drive traffic to that space. Add your page to your email signature, and then link your website to your page. So I'm going to go through a few basics that you can look at at posts. And one of the things that Facebook does is it's not automatic that if you put a post everybody who likes you is able to see that post on their page. That's not really how it works on Facebook. There's a filter that they call edge rank. And so if you're interesting to certain people, say, and, and the, re the way they categorize interest is they've been on your page quite a few times, then that post is going to be visible, visible by them right away. But if somebody went to your page once and liked you, they're not really going to see your page very often. So you need to make posts that are very interesting, very, and there's all these different ways to make it interesting that I'm gonna go through with you guys. But the first thing I encourage people to do is establish a strategy for every week or month. So for you go back to your goals and you say, okay, my goal is to reach dual income, no kids, couples. That's what I'm looking for. Um, because I think they're ready to go on the market and they're ready to upsize. So my goal this month is I'm going to explain that it costs less than I think it does to upsize. And all of my posts, not all of my posts, but the majority of my posts are going to be related to that. Next month is going to be, um, you know, how do you ha have an investment property? These people have a little bit more money than families. So let's talk about investment properties. And you want to kind of create a strategy so that they know what to expect from you for that month, which is very helpful. 
You want to keep your book post varied in terms of content. So articles, listings, testimonials, personal experiences, stories. You don't want it to be a, you know, a status update every time. You want to try to keep it kind of different and interesting to people. But you also want to keep it varied in terms of type. And there's several different types. There's videos, there's pictures, there's surveys, there's contents, contests, there's links. So you want to, there's two different ways to keep that varied. And then you want to keep the conversation going. If somebody responds to your post, if somebody likes your post, then write them back and say, hey, thanks for the like. I appreciate that. Um, send them a, you know, if somebody really gives you a shout out, send them a Starbucks card, you know, and, and say, I, I sent you something in the mail. You want people to see this. They, you want people to see that you interact with the people who are with you on Facebook. So this is a big thing that a lot of businesses make a mistake on. Facebook is to develop relationships. It's not to make money. As soon as you make it all about the money, they will know. People know right away. And they'll go, I am not interested in this guy anymore. And there's a little arrow on your personal Facebook page where you can go hide every post from this person. I never want to hear from them again. And so you want to develop relationships so that they can become money. But you don't want to make it so in your face. Did you know I do this? Did you know I do this? Did you know I do this? It's just too much. You, that you want to kind of have a balance. And that's I read an article recently about how um, Facebook is one of those places where, yeah, there's endless pictures of families and there's status updates, and it's, it's a very personal place for people. And um, what this, this social media strategist was saying was, just embrace it. Make it a part of your strategy. You know, have puppies on your website. People like puppies, you know? <laughs> so it's okay to be a part of that. It doesn't make you look unprofessional, as long as you don't, as long as you keep it within certain boundaries. So, and that's, I'm gonna address that a little bit later, but um, always make sure when you are putting posts together, is this going to come across as I'm selling to you, or are you actually gonna be interested in what I just said? And that's something to really think about. Think of it as a conversation with someone. Where's that little arrow? The little arrow, so. To get rid of people. Let me just go back. <laughs> How do I find it? It's hard to the post yeah. So let me just go to, oh gosh, that's not right. Here, I'll just go to my personal Facebook page here. Because there's sometimes when you friend somebody, then all of a sudden they just inundate you with oh, crap. Oh, it's terrible. Day. Yeah. So this is my home page. Wow, that's, and this is my friend Corey and his childhood picture. <laughs> uh, so uh, you can go up here. So if I go here and I, and I hover over Corey, there's a little arrow here. And if I click on that, it's going to say, report story, story as spam. So like, say you're getting spammed by the same advertiser over and over again, or hide. Or maybe you're really interested in what people have to say about Corey's pictures, and so you say follow posts, and every time somebody comments, I'm going to get a little mm -hmm. bubble that says that. Now it's so, companies too, right? Now that's yeah, same with companies. Part of advertising. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm actually going to explain how you can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> but if you click on hide, it's going to say change what updates you get from Corey. I, ha I get most of his updates right now. But I can also just say unfollow altogether. I'm just not interested in Corey, and I just click unfollow. So um, does that show up at the other end? Yeah. Do you, do you? No, they don't know that you've done it. So, so that's the nice thing. Like people don't know that you're not really interested in them. So that makes it it's not hurtful mm -hmm. to anyone. Is that on the <laughs> business page too? You can do that, or um, you know what? I was actually just thinking about that. I'm not sure. Let me see. I saw my friend Adrian on there. Ah, yeah, I can hide posts as well on my business page. So, mm -hmm. same thing. So that makes it helpful. There you go. Um, as you develop relationships, you develop trust, which in turn may become business. So that's something to think about. Even if relationships don't turn into business, you do get exposure, which makes you a trusted entity. So one of the big disadvantages of social media is it's very hard to measure your return on investment. It's, it's one of those things where you're like, I don't know if I get business from Facebook or not. Um, but if you're developing relationships with people, 
uh, it eventually becomes business. You just might not be able to pinpoint that it came from Facebook. But the, the big thing now, too, is Google has recently changed the way they rank their search engine optimization. So they're always saying, you know, you, have, you develop your website, and then it's all about how you tag your website, and it'll put you on the first page of Google on a Google search. They've actually recently changed that so that it has to do a lot with social media now. So how present you're on Facebook, how present you're on Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, that is all going to affect how close to the front page your website gets. Um, so when somebody looks up ads for real estate, if you're really active in social media, you have a higher chance of your website being on that first page. Um, so that's why you may not get direct profit from Facebook, but it is going to improve your rankings on Google. Yeah. Does that have anything to do with, like, if I get a million dollar listing and I, I, I put it on and I go to check it on, on, on Google mm -hmm. in some goofball that I don't even know has got my listing with their name on it and I can't even find mine, does that make me go up closer? To yeah, the top? it'll definitely make you go up closer to the top. Yeah. Like, is there another way to do that too? There is a way to do that for Remax agents in uh, our Connect site. Uh, there's a way to optimize your listing. And you can do all so, that too? Yeah. She pays me to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I find Bob just sits here and does what I want him to do. Uh, so an audience is nurtured. It doesn't happen overnight. And I hear this a lot. It's like, well, I spent you know, two weeks on Facebook, and I got 20 likes, and nothing happened. And it's something that takes time. And it doesn't take 45 minutes a day. It takes maybe five, 10 minutes a day. Uh, but if you do it consistently, you will receive reward with time and I would say three to six months time is what you're looking at. Okay so we're going to talk about edge rank a little and edge rank is that filter I was talking about that determines how people see your posts and there's a formula on Facebook that's basically um, they want to measure the affinity, the weighting, and the decay of your posts and what that means is do they interact with you? What kind of post is it? And how recent is it? So do they interact with you is the people who see your post. Did they say anything about it? Did they like it? Did they not? Uh, what kind of post was it? Was it a video? Was it a picture? Was it a link? Uh, pictures and links get you higher. People interact with it a lot more than just a simple post. And then how recent is it? What that does is the next time you post, it's going to make that post more, more or less visible. So it's a, it's a thing that builds upon itself. So if you put one post up of a really cute kid and say, you know, put up pictures of your kid too, uh, and people like it all over the place and they link and they share, the next time you post about real estate, that is going to be extra visible because the last time you posted, people really liked what you have to say. So um, that's one of the things, this is the, the edge rank formula that they create, but rank is basically how visible are you? And it, it's the, the way the score between the viewing user and the person who created it, what's happening between the two of us, the weight, so what type of it was it? Was it a comment? Was it a like? Was it a share? And then how old is it? And so that whole like business is posting once every 16 days, their decay is meaning that nobody's going to see their next post because you're obviously not interested in Facebook. That's kind of how, why we encourage you to post more often. So videos and pictures have a higher edge rank. Um, and the, the only reason for that is that people pay more attention to videos and pictures. So right away, Facebook is going to go, oh, there's a video here. I'm going to make this more visible to everybody else so that everybody else can see it. Um, so that's something you want to think about. I've seen a lot of people recently, instead of just posting a status update, like, I just sold a great home. They're actually, they actually go into, um, like they create a picture that says, I just sold a great home, and they, they upload it to their Facebook status. And Facebook doesn't know the difference between a picture that's only words and a picture that's a picture. So Facebook thinks it's, it's a picture, and they're like, okay, great, I'm gonna give you more visibility. So that's something you can do to kind of be more visible. When you're logged in as a business page, go to other business pages and make comments. And that's something that's going to come back to you. So if you go, um, one of the things that, you know, I follow My North Langley, because I live in Langley, and My North Langley does a lot of posts about our community. 
If I go as my business and I post on their page, my North Langley sees it, but so do all of my North Langley's followers. And there's, they have like 1,200 or something. So you want to, as your own business, kind of go back and forth. You want to like other pages that you respect, and then they're going to, they see, oh, somebody liked me, and they're going to go check out your page, and maybe like your page, and you kind of create a, a cyclical process. And the big thing you want to do every time you have a post, you want to give a call to action. You always want to think of it as an interaction, as an interaction or a conversation with someone. So if I come to you and I just say, you know, I sold a house today. It's like, okay, nice, you know. <laughs> but if you say, hey, fill in the blank. Um, if I were to sell a house today, what, what should we do together tonight? Or how would you celebrate? And then people will go, oh, let's go out for drinks, or let's do this, or, and people will, will interact with you. Try to think of ways that you can get a, a reaction from people. So post what you see normal people posting, but with a twist. So, and, and I'm going back to the puppies and the babies, is that they, they, that's what normal people post. Um, and, and they post about their friends and about what they did for dinner last night. So what you want to do is you want to kind of try to do that, but with a twist. And one of the things that I've seen a lot of people do is they, they choose a day of the week and they kind of create an event around it. Um, I have a post that I'm going to show you where someone created, they were actually an insurance company and they created Cutie Patootie Tuesdays. And every Tuesday they go, it's Cutie Patootie Tuesday, post pictures of your cute kids. And they do that every Tuesday. And people start posting pictures of their cute kids. What happens that makes them more visible on Facebook, and next time they post an article about insurance, the, the people who posted all those pictures are going to see that insurance article. So you're kind of trying to create an avalanche with that. Now there's gonna be like a million cutie patootie Tuesdays out there. <laughs> if you include posts that people interact with, then the ones that are more serious will also be of you. So that was what I was saying. If you include one that, that a lot of people have a lot to say about, then the next one, if it's serious, then everybody will see it, which makes it helpful. So I'm gonna go through this in a, in a sec, but you can create ads of your page on Facebook, and then you get more likes on your page. The more likes you have, the heavier your edge rank becomes. And you can also promote each one of your posts. So that it also, and that's where that comes in, where you see these posts on your page about something that you might know nothing about. Uh, that's where promote comes in, and I'll show you how that works as well. And these two cost money, so I'll, I'll let you guys know how to make sure you don't spend too much money on it. Yes? This, with this business page, is there a way you, uh, like, if, like for me, I don't have a business page. Mm -hmm. And I, I've got a Facebook page that I almost never use. Mm -hmm. But there's a bunch of people on there. Is there a way that you can mm -hmm. make them know that you've got a business page? Yeah, if you go to your business page, it's going to, um, here, let me see what I can show you. Here's my business page. There's a little panel at the top that you get right here. Um, and this is just for the person who owns that page. This is my, where'd you go? There. This is my this is my Realty Butler business page. So the panel at the top is only visible to you. And you can see here, invite friends. They're pulling these friends from my personal okay. page. So you can just click invite, and it's going to send them a little note saying, hey, like my business page. So you would be able to connect all of those people. You can also see um, all of the recent comments you've gotten. Uh, and you can see all your recent likes. And then you can see insights on your posts. We started last week, so that's why this is so flatlining here. But you can see that every time I had a post, people started talking about it more and we reached more people. So that, and I'll go into detail with that in a second. So. And, and if you have the business page, does it show suggested people too? Like, like suggested businesses like, would, you should like? Would like? show up and like, or how um, He would show up eventually, um, because what happens is Facebook watches out for what you're paying attention to, and they'll go, oh, you're paying attention to a lot of real estate sites. I'm gonna direct you to real estate sites that have a lot of weight with Facebook. So the more weight you get, the more you're gonna show up in these um, options. So yeah, that does happen. Okay. 
So here's an example of a realtor who is only in it for the money, and it's obvious. Uh, he's not creating a conversation because all of these posts happened on Saturday. He just posts them one after the other. He's sitting in his living room on Saturday morning, and he's like, I'm going to post all my listings for the week. When you do that, if I'm, a, if I'm a regular person and I see four posts all in a row, I go, well, obviously you don't want a conversation from me because you posted one thing and then five minutes later you posted something else. You don't want me to respond to the first one because now you want me to pay attention to the second one. So he's just posting, he's putting his listings on there. Um, I tried to black out his name so I don't even know who he is. Uh, <laughs> Let's look up the listings. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's no call to action. If I mean, it's check out my two bedroom, but it's, you know, that's pretty standard. It's, but so there's just really no interaction going on. He's just putting stuff on there just to put stuff on there. The thing he did right is, is there is a picture, there is a link. So what that does is, is it does give him a bit more exposure, uh, but it's not going to create much of a response because people don't really see a reason to. Yeah. Would you put, like, like if you had like some comments and stories, would you still put the odd featured listing, or do you just have yeah. it in the corner somewhere, like something you can click I would still listing? do featured listings. I just want to put them all up in one day. Yeah. Yeah, I'd put it. one up, and I'd say, I just got this great new listing. I really think you'd like the kitchen. Check it out. And so then they're going to go, oh, I want to see a picture of the kitchen. And then you click on the link, and then you go through the pictures. Would you so. ever ask other people, like, you know, um, like say if it was a really unique property, have you got any ideas on people that might be interested oh, in yeah. a property like this? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you can fish off the uh, the front yard and, and it's got this over here and these big yeah. trees. And, and you want and the nice thing is there's so many features that you can highlight. So maybe one day you say, This property you there, you can fish in the front yard, it's awesome. What do you think about that? Or do you know anybody who likes to fish? And the next day you're gonna highlight the trees and then the next day you're gonna highlight something else so you can it doesn't all okay. have to go on at once which makes okay. it nice because you can keep the conversation going for that property and um, you can also see I wasn't the owner of this page so I can only see that he got one like on here but as the owner of a page you can also see how many people you reached and this is the example of that so uh, last week I made this post fill in the blank if I had an assistant to handle all of my admin work I would blank and then people reply to it. Um, I would thank Realty Butler for taking all my admin headaches away. Um, so, and then I replied because I want to keep that conversation going. But I can see here at the bottom that 165 people saw this post. So I might only have 35 people who like my page, but 165 people saw it because Cameron commented on it and Paul commented on it, and the people on their pages saw that as well. So that kind of made it go in a circle. I elicited a response, and that's what you want to do. And I also got... That, so I don't, when you go, that was April 5th. And you got 165 um, people since April yeah. 5th. Like, well, wow. that was like on April 5th. That's usually, it's usually the day, yeah. Um, wow. So then, and I also got a like, and you know, that kind of stuff, but yeah, like by the end of the week, we had about 600 people we had reached, which is great. I spent $10,000 on an ad in my previous business and never got a call. <laughs> it's, it. it's hard. So yeah. when you see that, that's that's powerful. Like, oh, yeah. I have a question about that. Um, mm -hmm. When we do get a new listing, I will post it up on the Facebook, mm -hmm. and we've incorporated that into our hit list. So we'll mm -hmm. go in and see how many people have seen it, and we'll let the clients know that mm -hmm. so many people saw your listing on Facebook. But I've had one that I've put on there, and there's absolutely nothing on there, and I've had that on. I've actually reposted it a couple times. And nothing. I'm trying to get action, but there's yeah. nothing on it. So it's almost, I don't know if it, it might have been on occasion. You know, Facebook isn't perfect. There's glitches, yeah, so sometimes yeah. an ad just gets lost. Okay. That's, yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, it is there, so I'll kind of take it. So I'm almost tempted just to delete it. Yeah, yeah I would delete it and maybe repost it. And then repost it. Way, so yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, yeah. it'd be nice to tell the client. Yeah, people are seeing it. They see it. Yeah, exactly. But I don't know where the problem came. That's the only one out of all of them. It's, it, every now and then there's like an odd. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> the funny thing is it goes the other way too. And every now and then you go. There's no way this is going to get a response, and all of a sudden there's like tons of people responding yeah. to it. So, yeah. you had a question? Now, in order to see all the activity and who you reach, is this where you need to get the 25 likes? You have to get 25 likes to be able to have access to insights, which is okay. that graph. Um, you have to get 100 likes to be able to promote an ad. So that's another thing. 
So this is the Cutie Patootie Tuesday. Um, it says, post cute pictures of your kids. It's Cutie Patootie Tuesday. And this is an insurance company. Somebody, somebody really just send, sends in a picture of their kid. And they had 100 and, or 1,100 people saw this post. They had 25 likes and they had three people comment on it. And that's just one kid's picture. So that's where you can really build a lot of reputation through that. So, okay, so I'm just gonna give you a couple examples of a good status update versus a bad status update. So uh, first, here's a good one. And this is because, it, first of all, you, it, it's a bit controversial, it gives you a response. And it's Domino's Pizza, and it says, like this if you abide by the five-second rule. Comment if you would never let your, domino, if your slice of Domino's Pizza hit the floor. <laughs> so it's a little bit controversial because they are a food company, but they got 22 comments and 42 likes out of it. So it's one of those things where you want to get a bit of a response. Um, here is a comment from the Rolla Visitor Center. October's Rescue is Awareness Month, and Panera Bread is featuring the pink ribbon bagel. It made, it's made, it, there's just yeah. nothing to respond to there. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, it, they're rambling on. So um, this is not a good post, this is a good post. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's okay to be a little bit controversial because then you're gonna get people responding. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You know, I know Ray on occasion will put up a very, because he's very, a, a very strong Christian, he'll put up a very strong statement about his faith and he always gets a million comments. <laughs> And, and, and it might start a little bit of a fight. That's not bad, well, you know, yeah. you are, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, good versus bad links. So when you're talking about another business, before you talk about them, go to their page and like it as your business, okay? So what that will do is it will make that business, it'll make a link to that business right away. So for example here, this country club they started the Red Hat Paper Dolls came by. It's a very long post. Um, and they, they, if they had gone and liked the Red Hat Paper Dolls first, then this would have become a link automatically mm -hmm. on their post. And then what that does is it's going to, uh, Riley's Tree Farm, for example, is going to know that my North Langley commented on them. And then Red Hat Paper Dolls is not going to know. So Riley's Tree Farm could go and say, hey, thanks for the comment. Then all the people on Riley's Tree Farm who like their page are going to see that. So if you're going to comment on another business, always like their page first. And then that will make it link through. So. Okay. Um, since I have all of you guys back, before I keep going, one thing I just want to mention, I've talked about it a few times already. Um, we have a, a business called Realty Butler, and what we do is we provide administrative and social media services for realtors. So it's anything from social media, like we'll do all of your Facebook posts, we'll make sure they're optimized, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, we'll make sure that they are visible, um, and we do a fine balance of uh, business versus personal so that people are actually paying attention. Uh, we make it sound like you as well, so it's not a stranger um, posting for you. Mm -hmm. But we'll also do things like uh, we'll take care of all of your web forms in uh, RealtorLink. We'll make sure that everything is updated, all your clients are updated. Um, we are One of the big things that is very popular is we do uh, newsletters. So we will email and mail newsletters for you um, on a monthly basis. And so I have a bit of a handout here. We're running a contest right now, and now that you've all seen my our Facebook page, if you go to Realty Butler and you like the page, and you just make a quick comment about what you would do with the time we can save you, uh, we're running a contest where we're giving away a social media setup, and that's a two hundred and fifty dollar value. So um, we will go through and set you up with everything that you need. And if you have any questions, you can come and give us a call. Okay, so I'm going to keep going here. Uh, add images, videos, surveys. So here you have some pictures, you have some videos. That all um, will make you more visible. Uh, I was just talking with Andreas about the idea of videos. Um, is you have, if you start a YouTube channel, which is free, and you upload your videos to YouTube, um, you take that link and you, po you paste it in your uh, comments box, that this automatically pops up. 
So you don't have to, that, that way you'll have the box and the description, the description of the video. Um, and so you can upload just a video from your computer, but the nice thing about this is what this does is it creates a link to your YouTube channel. So it's going to um, make, increase your visibility online. So that's one thing you might want to do. And YouTube is very easy to start a channel. Um, you just need a Gmail account. Uh, add images, videos, and surveys. So this is what it looks like when you're going to post your status. It always it asks different questions. What's on your mind? What are you up to today? What, how are things going? If you click on offer, comma, event, this little drop down comes up. So you can, do a, you can do a question. So for example, who do you think should win the Oscar? And then you can add who's up for the, the Oscar for best actor. You can add who's up for that. When you click post, what people can do is they can click, I think so and so is going to win. And then there'll be uh, statistics of who thought was going to win, and people will be able to fight about it and make comments and that whole thing. That you can nice also, <laughs> yeah, you can add milestones. Um, so I mean, you might, you could add a milestone for every time you sell a home. It might get a little bit tedious. So what happens is it, it's it's the equivalent of a post. So um, a lot of people do it when they have another child or when they. Um, get a new job, it's a milestone for them. Yes? How can I search for other business pages or something that pop up my business? If you go to the very top, there's a, I, I don't know if it's different on your iPad. Um, there's a little search section. The iPad's not as robust as the desktop. Yeah, it's not as easy or as intuitive as the desktop. I don't know it's different now. Yeah. If you post a question like that, mm -hmm. wouldn't that be like 10,000 people who's posting the same question and how do you draw attention to it? Well, you want to you want to add you first of all you want to post a question that you think the people that you're trying to target would be interested in. Uh, but what it what it does is um, because people will be voting on it, is it's going to make it so that a lot more people see it. So if one of your clients votes on that, all of his friends are going to see that he voted on that, and they're going to go, oh, I want to vote on that too. I'm interested in that. So they start voting. I'm just and, commenting on the fact that you know. Who do you think should win the Oscar? Oh, that, well, that, yeah, this was just kind common, of a generic right? question. Yeah, that I there, yeah. Okay. yeah, you want to you want to try to be have something that, and and I actually made this slide right around the time the Oscars were out, so I was like, well, that could be something that some people might be interested in. But um, you know, you can even make questions about the homes you're listing. So, um, if you had a home that didn't have stainless steel, would that be an issue for you? Yes or no? You know that kind of thing, so that you can kind of get answers from people and then you will be able to see who answered and what they answered if somebody commented on it you can respond to that comment and kind of make it more important you can also add events so say you're having a client appreciation event um, you're you know sending everybody the movies you can add that on there and you can add offers so uh, click here like my post and I will give you blah blah and it'll it'll and so the reason you go through this instead of just Offering it on a post is this optimizes it for you. It will make sure that it's posted in several different places. Uh, monitor your Facebook page for spam. Unfortunately, spam happens. So you want to make sure if you're not monitoring it, then your clients are assuming that you're not paying attention to your Facebook page. And all you have to do is just very quickly, you go to your Facebook page every day and you kind of, I just kind of go, okay, I'm looking. Yeah, no spam, good. If there is spam, it's that arrow thing, and you just go report story or spam, and then, then it won't show up again, so it hides it. Uh, you also wanna do that on your, this is the page that your clients see. Uh, if you go to that, and like this is a post I made on Monday, if I click edit, I can actually delete that post. So if there any spam gets in there, or if you make a post and you realize there's a major spelling error in there, <laughs> two seconds later you can delete that and repost it. So there you go. Okay. So how to get noticed? And we're just going to go back to audience content call and call to action. You want to make sure that you're creating interaction. You want to keep it simple. I've seen a lot of people put out a contest where it's like, okay, like my page, then put a picture up, then have a comment, then share it with five people, and then I'll enter you into the contest. And then people are like, I'm not going to do that. We keep it simple. 
you want to make it silly, serious, or stunning. So don't have boring comments. It can be funny, it can be a bit shocking, um, it can be serious in terms of the content. That doesn't mean it's boring, uh, but just make sure that you're, you're trying to get a reaction of some sort from people. Uh, reward sharing. If you have a client that is constantly sharing about you with their friends, that is constantly commenting on your page, say thanks, send them a thank you card. Um, make sure that it's a way though that you can comment about it on Facebook so that other people can see that. So they can go, oh, that's cool, they got a Starbucks card, I'm going to start commenting on this page. So that's a good one. Embrace the unofficial, Some, and we were just talking about this, sometimes you get a post and you get no response and you thought it was going to get a big response, sometimes you put a post and you're like, eh, I don't think it's really going to do anything, and all of a sudden you have tons of response from that. I know you want to make it uh, you know, a formula, it doesn't always work that way, just embrace it and just go with it. If it goes big, just keep going with it and, and don't, don't avoid it, so that's a good one. And then deliver success, successive rounds, and that's the strategy in that um, for, if you say you have your cutie patootie Tuesdays, keep doing it every Tuesday, people start expecting it. If you have a strategy for the month, Make sure that you go, hey, this month I'm going to be discussing this and this, and then keep doing that throughout the month. Don't discuss random stuff throughout, because otherwise people don't really know where you're going with it. So, um, And then we were talking about this earlier with Bob. This is your admin panel. It's at the top of your business Facebook page. Only you can see this. Um, and it just shows you who has been, uh, who has written any comments. You can see your insights here. Uh, you can see new likes, so you want to make sure this is insights, especially that if you hover over with your arrow over certain spots like here, it can say 779 people were reached between the 21st and the 27th of March. And you can see when the purple means you posted, and the bigger the dot, it means you posted more. Um, and then the, this greenish color means that people are talking about it. So you can kind of, you can track back, after you've done it for a while, you can track back and go, well, these posts really seem to get big hits, and these don't really seem to get a lot of reaction, so you'll know. Um, okay, so ads versus promotions. This is where you can spend money, uh, but you want to be careful. So an ad will advertise your page as a whole, and it shows up on the right-hand column of a personal Facebook page. So this is what it would look like. If I go to my personal Facebook page, and I go here, right along here, we can see ads. And these are ads for other Facebook pages. And the way Facebook works is they are watching for what I comment on, the other pages I look at. When you write your hobbies and your interests on Facebook and the little profile, they pay attention to that stuff. So I like clothes, so the mod shop, mod cloth is always on there because they know that I shop at mod cloth. It's it's kind of like stocking. Um, so and and there's actually an option. There's a little X here. So I, if I'm not interested in this boot camp grand opening, I can just cross it out, and another ad will pop up. So the nice thing about you guys is you can get very specific with your ads. You can say I only want the ad to go to people who live in Abbotsford, who are of this age, who are single female women who, because they Facebook has all that information, who have said something about real estate in the last 30 days. Um, and so what that'll do is they get on their Facebook and they see their personal post, and then they go, oh, I wonder what this is all about. And you want to make sure that you put something interesting on there uh, about you, not just, I'm a realtor and blah, 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 blah. You want to try to kind of create some yeah, so what that'll do is it'll direct people to your Facebook page and it'll get you up to that 100 likes um, that you need to be able to do uh, promotions. And the way you do it is when you log into your business Facebook page on the bottom right, there's this, and it says see your ad here, and then it says advertise your page, you click on it and it prompts you through how to do it. Um, it doesn't cost very much and it'll tell you for $15 we believe that we could advertise your page with 2,000 people. Um, and it'll kind of give you an estimate, and then if you put in ten dollars, it'll say we think you would, we would reach this many people. You get you pay per click, which is kind of interesting. So the average cost per click in Canada is forty-one cents. So you kind of say, 
I'm going to do $10. I want you to cap it at $10. Please don't charge me anymore, which is kind of nice. Um, and, it's good, and they'll say, this is how much each click is going to cost you. And so this is how many clicks you'll get out of it, basically. Um, use only for very specific demographics. So try to limit it to a location. Uh, if you try to reach everyone, then you're going to have people in China liking your page, which isn't bad, but you might not get a lot of clients. So you've already done this, this advertising? I haven't yet. We're, okay. we're getting ready to get that going, So because we only have 35 likes on it. So. Uh, you are reaching your target market in their comfort zone, which is good, and that's what I just showed you. I get on my personal Facebook page to see what my friends have to say, and then I go, ooh, what's this? It's pretty, and I click on it, because that's, that's, I've seen so many spelling errors in those, and, and right away I go, well, I'm not clicking on that. That's ridiculous, you know? So make sure you watch what you put in there. Um, so again, you're, if you click on the create an ad, it's going to do, what would you like to do? I'd like to get more likes. I'd like to promote some of my posts. Um, it's going to say create the ad, and then as you go through, it'll give you prompts. It'll tell you this is how many people we think will reach. It'll ask you for all the, the specifics of what you want on that ad. So promotions. This is an example of a promotion on my homepage this morning. Uh, I don't know who Happy Parenthood 365 is, and I don't know why I'm getting this because I don't have kids, but you know, maybe I said something about someone's kids at some point. Um, but it was on my page, and this is a promoted <coughs> post because I have no idea who this guy is. And instead of it showing up on the right-hand column where you have to go and look mm -hmm. at, it actually shows up in your feed. So what that looks like is, so this is my feed right now. Um, these are friends, they're friends, friends, and I'm looking for a sponsored post. So funny, I, I delete all my stuff, I do the whole, I don't want to see this, I don't want to see this, so then I don't get a lot of sponsored posts. Uh, let's see, just keep going down. Ray owns that page, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, this actually is going to show up soon, this is from this morning. There we go. So I don't know Happy Parenting, but it's actually in my feed. So it's a part of what I've been reading about my friends, and now there's something else. And it's like, oh, how to deal with a four-year-old picky eater. So what he's doing is, is he's put a post on his page, and he said, I want to promote this. And what that does is it's going to get people to, I, I could go now and I could click on like his page, and I could check him out. So, um, so far he's had 58 likes. 25 comments and 12 shares from that post that he put up this morning. So um, that's something you want to look at doing. And again, this does cost money as well. So the way that works is, is when you start typing, uh, you have to have 100 likes. But when you start typing in your status update, a little box pops up that says promote now. And then it's going to say, um, I want to promote to people who like my page and their friends. For $15, this budget will read an estimated 2,200 2200 to 4,200 people. And I'm going to say set it. Sounds good. Promote this post. So um, one of the things you can do is if you have a, a post that you don't feel like it's going to get a lot of visibility or a home that you really want to sell, you can spend that $15 and reach 4,200 people within that demographic that you've set. So not too expensive. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you guys a few tools uh, that'll make this all more helpful because you're going, okay, so how do I not spend 45 minutes a day on Facebook? There's a couple of things you can do. Buffer is an app that uh, is available. It's, called, it's bufferapp.com. And what you do is you sign up for a free account. It puts a little icon on your browser and what you can do, and I'll give you an example right now. So, this is my browser, and see this little icon right up here? If I click on it, it's going to work, right? Yeah. Um, this pops up. So it's got the link to the Facebook page that I'm on right now. So if you're reading an article and you think this would be a great Facebook page, um, you click on the Buffer app, and you can say, I want it to be, I've selected both my Twitter and my Facebook. And this is what would it, it would look like. Welcome to Facebook. Log in, sign up, or learn more. I'm like, I'm obviously not going to do this. But then you can hit share now, which means it would share right away. Or you can click on buffer. 
And what you do when you set up your Buffer account is you say, I want my posts to go out on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 and 5. That's what I want. So you can fill up your buffer. It's kind of like, uh, you. so you, Monday morning you get up and you find a few articles relating to your strategy, you create a few posts yourself, and then, because you don't necessarily have to have this link, I can just delete it and say, having fun today, and then buffer. Um, so then you kind of stock up on that. The nice thing with buffer is there's pros and cons. The pros are, um, the easy browser icon right on your, uh, on your right, of, sorry, on your browser. Um, it auto populates the link. So if you are on a web page that you think would be interesting, when you click on that buffer, that link automatically pops up, so you don't have to copy and paste that kind of stuff. And you can pre-schedule. So it will post sometime between nine and five Mondays or Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's the schedule you have set for it. The cons are there's limited social media networks to stay on the free buffer app. So I think you can add three, and then you can't add any more. So um, you also can't add LinkedIn to it, which makes it a bit tough sometimes. Um, Pre-scheduling is limited to, to general time. So you can't say, I want it to go on Wednesday at 3 p.m. It's only going to go Tuesdays or Thursdays, 9 to 5. Like, that's the schedule I set, so that's what it's going to do. So you can't be very specific on your times. So, and then limit free scheduling. Okay, Hootsuite is the one that I find is the most popular out there right now. And it's a dashboard that you create on your site. I'm a little wonky because of the, this computer screen. Okay, so what it does is you can keep track of I have my personal Facebook, I have my Realty Butler Facebook, I also have my Realty Butler Twitter on there. Um, it will show me all of the uh, news feed that's happening on my page, so pages that I've liked and people that are posting. It'll show me what I've posted recently. You can also add, it'll show me when somebody has a comment, when somebody sends me a direct message. There's a lot of very customized uh, columns that you can add. And then you can post from it. At the top it says compose message. So you just compose the message, hit post, and then it'll post. Um, the nice, the, the big pro with Hootsuite is um, you can, first of all, uh, easy browser icon, same thing. There's a little owl that you can install on the top when you click on it. And when you pre-schedule, you can schedule to a very specific time. So you can say 2 o'clock on Thursdays. That's it. Um, then specialized searches. So with Twitter, uh, you can't do this on Facebook because Facebook doesn't have the same capacity as Twitter. But on Twitter, you could look up, you could create a search that says Abbotsford real estate um, single family home. If anybody mentions those words on Twitter, you're going to get a feed of that. And so you'll be able to see that at any point. Um, I used to have a catering company and I would put up I said Langley Catering, and anytime somebody put up Langley Catering, you can see that in the feed. And most of it, you know, obviously with real estate, most of it's going to be another realtor posting about real estate. But every now and then there's going to be someone on there going, I'm looking for a realtor. Do you know anyone? And you can go, I'm a realtor, and because you have that search put up. So uh, you can have so many social networks at once on this. You can have your Facebook, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, you can just kind of keep adding to that dashboard, which makes it nice. And the pre-scheduling is specific with this one. So instead of it scheduling, posting in a range of time, you can say, I want it at exactly this time to go. The cons are there's no auto-populating links like there is on Buffer. So if you're on a site and you say, I think I would like this, you have to copy the link and paste it into the compose post. Um, all pre-scheduling happens manually, so you always have to put in the date and the time you want it to happen. There's no ranges. Uh, and if you want any statistics from them, you have to pay for them. That's how Hootsuite makes their money. They're actually a local Vancouver company. So, Pages Manager is for your phone. So you can get your Facebook app on your phone or on your iPad, but you can't post to your business from your uh, phone. Uh, so you can post to your personal Facebook page, but um, you can't post to your business page from your phone. 
And that makes it kind of irritating because you might be in the middle of something and go, oh, this would be great. Uh, if you download Pages Manager, it'll let you do that. So you can go from Pages Manager to your business page directly. Uh, it's free, so post business page. Uh, cons is it's a small screen, you're on a phone, so sometimes if you really want to get into your posts, um, you can't do certain links. Um, it makes it a little bit more difficult sometimes. Sprout Social is uh, a really interesting uh, website that I just found, and it's going to give you really specific information about who is looking at you on your social media. So um, this, I just opened this last week for Realty Butler, and 41% of my audience is male, 59 is female. Um, I can actually look up, here I'll go back to Sprout Social here. So if I go through, I can see, uh, where was it? There's, there's a ton of different um, statistics I can pull. There's somewhere, I'm missing it right now, but there's a, a spot where you can actually see who in Vancouver was looking, who in Langley was looking, who in Abbotsford was looking, so it's very specific. The problem with this app is it's not free, so you do have to pay for it. it I think the package is started like um, $9 a month, but I, I just have the free one right now. You get like a 30-day trial. So pros, you get detailed demographic reports, cons, it's not free. So. Um, there's a couple of great blogs that I follow, and if you're interested in more information about how Facebook works, these two guys really know their stuff, so um, this is a good two people to follow, and they obviously are on Facebook, so you can go to their Facebook pages, like them, and anytime they post, you'll be able to see it that way. So, uh, Todd Maffin and John Linger. And... Uh, I have a disclaimer for all realtors. So if you do open a Facebook page, you must identify your brokerage. This is a rule uh, that council has put forward, and if you don't, you could get in trouble. There's some realtors out there with too much free time on their hands, and they will file a complaint. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so make sure that you identify your brokerage on your Facebook page, on your Twitter, on any social media. Every time you do um, an article, and you link to that article, you have to identify, if it's your article, you have to identify that it is it is with your brokerage as well. Um, is there yeah. a way that can be done automatic? You don't have to type it all out each time? Um, no, there isn't. <laughs> yeah, but you just want to make sure that you are representing your brokerage. If you do a YouTube video, make sure that on that video it has that brokerage at any point. The chances of you getting in trouble are, are slim, but some realtor out there might go, well, I watched this video and there was no identifying brokerage, and then, you know, you're going to get fined, so, yeah. Uh, and then, it, again, if you want to... Um, Obviously, they're not selling houses up there. <coughs> yeah, there. yeah. Controlling the internet. Controlling. <laughs> uh, again, if you want to win a setup, um, we can set up your page. Your, your Facebook page, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, your Google Plus, we can make sure it's optimized and ready to go um, for $250. We'll actually give it to you for free if you go on our Facebook page. We're going to be doing a draw on April 15th of all the people we get comments from, so make sure you get on there. Um, we do, in turn, if you're, if you're saying, I just don't want to handle my social media, we do handle that for you. Um, and we sit down with you and we come up with a strategy and we make sure that it represents you. So if that's something you're interested in, you can talk to myself or to Brent afterwards. And um, any questions about Facebook? And so yes. so you, you sign us up for 250 and then there's a monthly fee? If you sign up for the monthly package, we don't charge you a set of fee. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and if, you come, if you do a couple of services, like say you do the social media and the newsletter, you get a discount as well. So we offer a discount for combined services. So yeah, 